Hey everybody, welcome back to another Stone Face Reactions. I'm Theta, and I feel like there's some things to go over real quick before we do anything else. For you uh, returning visitors who are wondering about the new overlay and uh, why there's only one of us here, uh, go ahead and stick around. For you new people who have suddenly jumped into uh, whatever episode this happens to be and you don't really care, just go ahead and skip ahead in the chapters, it's fine. But if you're wondering what's going on, then here it goes. Uh, Griffin decided to retire from content creation. So I have been left with the shows that could not find a home, right? So uh, if you ever see any show in the playlist that you've been watching that uh, suddenly I appear in by myself, and you decide to skip over any explanations, but you've heard this one, that's why. Uh, we sent Griff off into his real-life struggles to achieve the things that he wants to achieve, and we are left here with these. Um, otherwise, I am here to continue the saga of Raz Afon, and I'm sure at least one of you out there is saying, wait a second, Wait a second. You're the guy who's seen this before, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I am that guy. Thank you. You remembered something. Um, otherwise, though, remember then that I also saw this 20 years ago. I do not... I do not remember everything. In fact, I remember one broad stroke of a story, and everything else so far has been mystery. But wait, you might ask. Weren't you leading Griff through this? No, you understand one thing between my relationship with Griff. I was gaslighting him as hard as possible. Everything I saw was brand new to me, except for maybe, like, a couple of things in the first few episodes. It was a miracle that Griff believed that I knew everything. So, <laughs> yeah, I have been on a ride myself. Uh, I believe there was even one of you commenting, like, last, uh, last reaction, or the reaction before that, that you told them. You told Griff I was gaslighting you, or him, rather. I was gaslighting him, and that he was doing a great job. Well, unfortunately, I must admit to you now, you've got the dumber of the two reactors left. Uh... Obviously, there are other shows you may have seen on the channel that I have picked up with new co-hosts as I'm trying new things, but at the end of the day, I am sticking to the shows that I promised you that we would start, or that you voted on polls, uh, which is why a number of them have gone back to episode one, and I'm starting it over with a new person. So you're getting half of a new reaction and half of a rewatch, because I don't want to introduce new people to new shows halfway through. I just didn't feel it would be appropriate. Same thing for here. I'm not going to ask somebody new to say, hey, watch 15 episodes of this and then join me tomorrow, you know? <laughs> I think that would not be fitting. So here I am, by myself, to continue the watch of Raz Afon. Now, again, obviously, this is not something I don't enjoy. I have said a number of times that Raz Afon is better than Evangelion, and during the age it came out, when it was brand new and I was watching it, I said this was the better mecha show. Now, it's obviously Super Robot, and I didn't know that back then, but I know it now. And now, I also have the additional context of I've completely watched Nadia, The Secret of Blue Water, right? And I know how that was meant to set up Evangelion, but then it didn't, because Gainax is a shitty company at the end of the day. And that at that point, I said this was better than Neon Genesis Evangelion, the company that put, uh, sorry, the show that put uh, Gainax on the map. So here we are. I'm roundabout cutting my own legs out from under me with my love for Nadia and then my love for Raz Afon and my distaste for Neon Genesis Evangelion all coming together. And now a solo reaction. Uh, also, I should also say, um, the first thing I probably should have said in this entire video, thank you to Yuki Alley once again for sponsoring this. 
as a gold tier Patreon. Uh, this is your pick for the month and has continued to be for a while now, and we always enjoy your support. You're now just not mind-boggling Griffin anymore. Now you're just mind-boggling me. I will admit uh, some of the things threw me off when we were watching the show in the past that I didn't express surprise for because, again, I was gaslighting Griffin so hard. Like, I did not remember the whole Caldera with the uh, third organization. Uh, the one with the old man and the... I think she was the clone girl. Um, digging up the artifacts. I guess they're Moo artifacts. I didn't remember that the, the scientist guy, which I believe was the last episode we watched, with his whole backstory from the one Moo creature that they had to destroy, didn't know he was a clone of himself. That was an actual surprise for me, but I was so focused on gaslighting Griff that I did not show it but kept trying to indicate to Griff for him to say the obvious thing out loud. So there is that. Now, I'm going to be approaching this the same way that I've been approaching all of my uh, newer solo reaction series, which is to say, first, we're going to watch and we're going to react to the show. Then, I'm going to give my afterthoughts for that reaction. After that, I'm going to watch the show again. Uh, for you on here on YouTube, you're just going to see me fast forward doing a whole lot of, you know, fast forward motion stuff. But I'll be taking notes so that I don't miss anything anymore. It's fun to watch a reaction, sure, but we've never been a reaction only channel. We like to, I wouldn't say review, maybe discuss. We're a discussion open channel. If you ever seen any of our over an hour long reactions to a 24 minute show, there you go. Now you know where that's coming from. So we get that. But before we do anything else, I want to open you up to this. You might recognize this is a series of faces, and the background might cue you in. Yes, this is a concept board. I want to say about three or four months ago, uh, I mentioned out loud that I would make one for Griff to fill out so that he could try and keep track of all these characters' relationships with one another. And he said, yeah, I'll try and do that. And look, Griff is not good at time management, nor has he ever paid much attention to the shit that we've done here on the channel. It's always been me. I'm always the guy behind the scenes, so hate me if you want for my opinion, but know that nothing would have gotten out here if I was not dedicated to this. So, I made this for him like three or four months ago. And we had a whole month in between where we didn't even react to any of the Patreon stuff because we put the Patreon on pause so nobody would get charged for anything, and we uh, kept going. So it's been... Feels like two months now since the last episode of Razi Apon we've watched. Plus, add on to that, 20 years of not remembering stuff, having a shit memory in the present, and a long time of gaslighting Griff into believing that I knew more than I did. Which has left me not knowing anything. Or not knowing anything. Obviously, I remember whatever is important to the moment that makes me feel like I'm getting this right. But obviously, I am not as I am not as full of information as I would be with other shows where I have a longer list of notes to go through. So I apologize to you, uh, Yuki Ali, specifically for that. Uh, but obviously, now I'm going to be doing this in that same note-taking fashion that I've been doing with, say, Crest of the Stars or. Now, Dura Ra, as you've seen there, or Fate Zero. I'm going to be taking the same serious tone and watching, or maybe not in the reaction, but in the note-taking. But before we do all that, that's why I'm bringing up the board here. I'm going to do a quick fast-forward of me setting up the board and trying to remember how everybody's connected to one another. I am obviously going to get a lot of it wrong. Now, remember... I'm only up to the episode I'm at, so if there's some, some missing connections or things like that from the, after this, don't tell me. But what I will ask is, please do tell me what I've gotten wrong and what I've missed. 
uh, after you see me set this all up from the episodes that I've already seen. Again, it's been a number of months now that I've had to forget stuff, plus I am bad. I'm just not good, right? <laughs> so take that into account, and I'll catch you on the other side. back again. I apologize if this is not focused right on who I'm looking at. I think I have it centered on my screen, but unfortunately where I've been working on it. Uh, you know what? Hold on. Let me move this over here. There we go. Now I can see both things at the same time. Now, this is probably just a giant mess of incorrect things. So, before you get to correcting me, let me try to explain myself a little bit for just the things that I remember. Obviously, these two are the friends back in, I was about to say Neo Tokyo, but that is Akira. Um, Tokyo Jupiter, right? That's what it's called. These are the two friends that, uh, let me follow the green line. Ayato has left back at Tokyo Jupiter. Uh, Hakura here is obviously the one who helped get him out. Hakura... Obviously, if you follow the green lines down here, friend LV, LV, follow the green lines, one of the uh, pilot crew, obviously, I'm going to have to clean this up too at some point. Normally, I try to make it more clean with the space between them. I'm going to admit now, I cannot remember who Donnie Wong is, but context clues, I'm pretty sure he's one of the pilots, given his jacket. Also, you see the shoulder here, that's probably one of these. One of these two people. Uh, obviously, I remember her. We all remember her. Uh, let's see. I'm not really remembering who uh, Mariko here is. I think this is the flashback lady that ran off and got married to somebody, which is why I'm. This is like faintest of memories here. Why I have a blue line connecting her up to both Ayatu and Hikaru. Uh, Haruka, sorry, rather Haruka, because that would make them cousins, and I believe that's the connection there. I mean, obviously, there's no longer reason to gaslight anything. I know who she is. Um, I know she's a girl that got left behind when the whole dome went up around Ayatu, that she had a crush on him when they were kids, and then she got separated and then aged up, and that's why she's kind of been if there or not about what to do about Ayato. And then you have Megumi, obviously, is the Ayato-aged... Let me back out of here a second. The Ayato-aged love interest that he lives with now. Uh, I believe she lives in the same house, which is also why we have this three connector up here, connecting them all to this guy, uh, Shugo, uh, who owns the house, but also why the line connects over to here, to this guy, because Shugo reports to him, 
And that's where another confusion point gets in my mind. I cannot remember uh, if they report to Shiro or Jin. I cannot remember which of these two is in command of the operation. Also, Captain Nomad, I believe, is the guy from the very beginning uh, who pilots the boat that we see in the first fight. So he's just allied to the command structure. Could not... Uh, same problem. Don't remember which of these two guys to attach him to. I remember he is the one who uh, lost his daughter in the fight or the explosion in Australia, which is, you know, his whole backstory of I followed a direct order and it caused me to lose my marriage. Oh, God, she's not the marriage lady, is she? I don't think so. Again, this I'm going to have to have you all correct me on this. It's going to be a long list of corrections. Um, also, where is she? I didn't connect her to anything, but I do remember Kim is the one who has the music box that plays the song where she lost her family in the Australia thing, too. So I remember there's a connection there, but I don't know. They've never talked about it together, so I'm not really, like, putting it together. Uh, obviously, White Line to the detective, to everybody I could remember he talked to. He had the conversation with this guy about his uh, Australia history. He talks to her uh, outside of the portal where people go missing for extended periods of time. And obviously, he's had a talk with Ayato here as well. Uh, white Line between Ayato and the pirate here, Elvi, because Elvi finds out that he is a Mu or tattooed or something. I can't remember. It's that, that alien connection thing. Because when she finds out about it, she is obviously wants to kill him, but they kind of seem to come to an understanding. I believe that's like the last episode. No, the last present tense episode that we saw featured that. Uh, was not that exactly. The only person I remember the old guy here uh, interacting with was one of the clones of Helena, so I'm just attaching it to them. He might even be related to the Doctor over here, but I don't quite remember. But I remember in their past tense episode, sorry, there you go. In their past tense episode, these two were like friends as child children, but that was the whole clone thing. And if I'm honest, I can't remember who he interacts with. He is up to a bunch of shit, but for some reason he is escaping my memory right now. So I'm going to need help. I'm just going to need a lot of help here, catching myself back up. Obviously she's got a massive crush on him. He was hitting on somebody else last episode, but I think that was just for effect, and I can't remember who. Uh, obviously they're playing each other off. They're playing it off like these two are related, but I do not think she's actually related to him. I think this is just a just a veil. Obviously, she is friends with him because she is like him. Obviously, we can scroll up here and his mother is up here. Obviously, I put cats as being related to their masters. So the cat she rescued in like episode two or three. Boom, there we go. I also know that this is Razaphon itself. I do not remember anything about the character name. Uh, I think it's supposed to be somebody he left behind as well. Like, it's supposed to be the child version of her, is what I want to say, but I can't really remember, and that's supposed to be, like, a reveal, I think, so if it is, don't tell me, I will remember it in due time, or the show will tell me. Obviously, these are the two military people that worked with his mother that we saw in Tokyo Jupiter. All the people from the command staff connected together, like I said, they have their own individual stories. I don't remember these two having anything. I think he has a crush on um, her. Not sure. Don't remember. But yeah, she's the one with the music box story. I should have... Okay, no, I did. There's a green line connecting her to him because she plays the violin for him on the anniversary of his daughter's death. Otherwise, I think that is everything I have to go over on the board. And once again, these are just the things I remember right now, or think that I remember, because obviously I'm probably getting a bunch of this wrong. Uh, additionally, I might remember more later, or you can help remind me.
comment below what I've gotten wrong, and please just elaborate all you want. Just make sure it's not a spoiler for something in the future. Make sure this is only backwards-facing information. I would love to know, and again, I'm back in the serious note-taking phase of my reaction life, so uh, just hit me up with all the information that I've missed. Otherwise, this is it for now. Um, oh yeah, I didn't put the uh, the legend on here. Green is allies, friends. Blue is relations, uh, specifically uh, actual relations, not like relationships. Uh, I've been putting purple down for relationships. I haven't done that for this one yet because I'm so unsure of everything at the moment. Plus the whole time-based nature of some of these relationships. And white is just unknown. Uh, if you go from an enemy to a friend to an enemy again, you might be on a white line. That's what that represents. Uh, and obviously red would represent enemies, but I don't think anybody... Except for maybe that pilot lady and Ayatu have been enemies at any point, because enemies tend to die. Because you know, technically, you could also put the uh, the scientist love interest lady over here as an enemy to Ayato, because they had that fight once too. But I think things are too complicated here to have just direct enemies. Other than that, I. Th I think it's just a matter of getting into it. So, I think without much else to go on, let's just go ahead and watch the next episode of the show. Well, I've had about, what, 15 episodes now to stare at the lyrics of the opening song. But given the nature of reactionary content, I guess that's all the time I've been given to really appreciate it. Given the fact that I really can't let the song play, <laughs> otherwise, otherwise copyright is just going to get me. But I think I've expressed up until this point that I really did like this song. I don't sound like this song is dead. I really did like this song. I don't know what that was. That sounds like a Trump impression. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And uh, however many times that you've seen me on the camera now. By the way, that was clearly an Evangelion reference there. Standing over the vastness with all the crosses on it. I don't know how many times here I pointed out to Griff to spot everything in the opening. Because it is rife with just telling you what the story is about. Like, Shadow, Shadow, there, standing in a field full of clocks that are moving faster than anything else, right? Okay, so maybe he was related to the old guy. Okay, so I should have tied them together too. I guess I didn't I didn't express the fact he was part of that organization because I just kind of forgot to be fair that would be super annoying not the most annoying way I've ever been woken up though Like I said, the last episode that was present day. 
was him being confronted by that pilot lady, so we haven't had any time to compress with all that. That was under our control. Are we talking about the artificial one that was the last episode that I thought we destroyed? でも、メグはうまくなったと思う。これと、お皿場できるかな明日は昇格パーティーできるわ。絶対。あ、そのことだけどさ。もしかすると出られないかも。主品が。そりゃないっしょ。当たり前。やがてビエロンプロモーションパ
明日早いんだけどさどうする私はいつも通りにしとく鍵持ってるしじゃあそうしといてお忘れ物ないようご注意くださいフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフいい勉強になったわささやかな俺私にはもういらないもの見せる相手がいなくなっちゃったからあなたのおかげでとびふえ Things that weren't exactly working out before between you and the other doc. She did not know what the Honto no cotton and the shit on I hope I look at the stetton. Stetton, no, she told me my stetton. I know. Remember when I said that I'm horrible with this sort of shit? I enjoy watching it. But I'm horrible at reacting to it. Like, I just don't know what to say. ウソはね、疲れた方よりついた方が辛いものよ。人は目来ないかしら。オッケー、アンコ。分かってますよ。あなたが本当はどこに行こうとしているのか。あ、セクレットブルーワーター。2022年5月5日付けを持って。Because I'm saying there's so many conflicting emotions going on in this show, it's really hard to hold everything together. Even if you did know everything that was going on. I think I had it backwards yet again. <laughs> that I thought he had a crush on her. It turns out it was the reverse that he crushed on somebody else and they were already doing the thing. I guess my problem is I could also just be remembering the end of show, right? The end of show relationships and forgetting how we got there. Because that's what a lot of this is, right? Just trying to remember where we were or how we got where. Because 
Because these two, this was my main thing. Man, you knew what you were when you saw your mother bleeding. あなたは真実を見せるって東京から連れ出しといてそれで真実を隠して僕はこんなことなら東京にいればよかった See, I'm on her side this whole time. So when he treats her like that, it's just like, fuck you, guy. But I've already, if you watch the whole board thing, obviously you know where I'm coming from with all that. This is what I would hope I'd be like as an old man. Random stranger wanders along. Hey, I'll teach you how to play chess. Welcome to the park. あやとくんも言ってしまうかもしれない。あんな子でも結構荷物があるんでね。私どうしたらいい？僕がしてやらないとあの子は何もしないから。それが分かってたら僕も止められたよ。捨てるの？何を？妹じゃないって。あやとく
もう行くのかい呼んでるのそうか五木君行かしてやってくれないかこの人を兄様ありがとうあやとくんあやとくんどうしてごめんなさい謝らないでごめんなさい君は見極めたい<laughs> this doesn't even make sense from any perspective right why would you let him go back to the Mulians with the weapon you don't let him take the weapon back to your enemies. Be fair, he doesn't love you. Not like she does. Is he 20 years ago? I think this is the first time I've seen that kind of relationship in an anime. This is why I care about her more than I do him. Still doesn't make very much sense from a non-relationship standpoint. Again, letting the Razafun fall back into Mu hands. God, I feel so bad for her. Slightly less bad for her, but still at the same time. Right, there's something there. How would you be able to verify her brainwave pattern? She wouldn't be plugged in. Do we still have the other project ones that we made that we had to fight with the other last time? I do love how we always have double names for these episodes. Oh, God, this would be harder to unpack than anything. I don't even know. I don't even know how I'm about to approach this in the note taking section. Right? I mean, we're not, we're, I think we're still less than halfway through Razafon. I can't remember how many episodes of Razafon there are. I want to say like 30 something, right? Bad at this. Um, because if memory serves, we have an entire, like, two large arcs to go through still. And we're about to enter that other one now with this episode end. But, God. So, I'm just remembering now how much of this uh, show is about relationships between characters, which is so apropos of me making a board at the beginning of this recording and then getting it all wrong. <laughs> uh, and then having to try and restart my memory by watching this. And it being the culmination of the reaction of a bunch of relationships that have occurred so far. And then. I'm trying to make the foundation of my new memory of the show based on that, and it's such a shifty, 
false foundation that I could have possibly tried to start from. Yeah, I remember the arc. I remember there being an arc where he returns back to Tokyo Jupiter. It's where the thing that I wanted Griffin to see the most happens, right? We all know. Uh, if you don't know, I'm not going to spoil it for you because I, I want to be surprised when it happens again because I don't know when it's going to happen again. But I know that's the arc we're getting into where it happens, right? So, but I think the major thing about that is I don't remember Quan going there. That's my thing. I also think I described this to Griffin before, that that whole area, that time frame where it happens, I think I was really sick when I was watching it. And I don't mean like, oh, I was out of my mind. I mean like fever-induced, not understanding the world, everything's a dream, could have been taking pe peyote just out of it. I remember so little and so much of it does not attach to me anymore. So this might as well just be the first time watching it for real with real human eyes. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I think there was a lot of culmination there that I was... The thing that I'm finding now is that everything in all of these shows is happening that I wanted Griff to see and Griff is now not here. Like, uh, with the woman's attachment to Ayato, right? I was like, pay attention to the gloves she's giving him. It's like the gloves that she gave him, and uh, that other girl gave him in the flashback. Put the pieces together, Griff. And here they are. She's crying. She's holding his hand. She's telling him she'll believe in him no matter what. Because she's believed in him all these years until the point where she went back to get him and brought him back. So she's willing to trust in him some more, even if this is some wrong decision that he's making. And it's like, this, this one episode after Griff left is the moment for realization that I wanted him to make. Not thinking that they were just cousins or some distant relation, but something across time. I think the last thing Griff ever said was, I thought, I think he's just her mother, or something like that. No! Not that at all! Ah! I don't know. Like I said, not good with emotions. I have survived all this time by supplanting my emotions with a stone face. And it's allowed me to get through many a harsh situation in my life that what otherwise I think break me. So here I am on the other end of that, unable to express to you without insane levels of energy, or at least more than are required for the situation that I'm trying to tell you about a show that inspired that energy 20 years ago. Like you said, uh, anything you saw was a mistake on the board that I uh, showed earlier on the episode, please tell me. Give me as, as much information as you think I should have so that I can self-correct for the future because otherwise I don't know how I'm going to handle it. I'm obviously going to keep watching. I'm going to keep putting everything into the new context without Griffin, but that's been the hardest thing so far. God, so many of these shows just make me feel that, uh, that sentiment as well, right? Griffin is someone I've spent the last 10 years with. Just like just like this, the the situation here, and then Griff is left to go off on his own to do other things, and unlike her, I do not believe Griffin is coming back, so I do not have that absolute faith. He seemed pretty certain that he was entering a new chapter of his life. Ah, ooh, Jesus. So yeah, I've gotten a couple of people confused. I think the greater majority of them I have still essentially in the right characterizations on that board, but help me out.
Otherwise, I think I'm going to go into the note-taking section. Don't know how the hell I'm going to take notes on a emotional-based story. Going to give it my best shot, and I will catch you on the other side of that. Alright, back from the notes, uh, like I said, this is a more emotional set of, uh, scenes, I, I'm saying episode, but scenes, I guess, is what I'd more refer to it as, it's a series of setups and payoffs for a number of different characters, um, and I find that's harder to take notes for than rather a statement of facts or a sequence of events that have, like, the blanket of historical accuracy like if i'm thinking about this like world war z right world war z is a novel based on the premise that the united nations sent a guy out to get facts and figures about the war with the undead and he included the human element and they're like get rid of that we don't need that we need the the raw data and he's like, the human element is what makes this important. And they're like, write your own book. I'm the UN in this scenario, trying to pull out the cold, hard facts and figures information from the human element. Because my brain can't uh, identify, is that their human element? So yeah, just going down my list of notes. Uh, some of them are just going to be more like, if you watch my Gundam reactions, how I just have questions. Because, like I said, I don't remember more of the show than I do remember. So, M-Type Specimen 1 is the Razaphon, right? Is That's a question. I think it's the Razaphon, and I think that's right. But it's a question because I'm not sure. We saw later in the episode that the simulation included an M-Class Type 2 double O part. So I'd assume the M stands for Moolian. But actually, now that I say that out loud, I don't think that's right either because those are called Dolems. So why would it be an M-Class if the M was Moolian and they're Dolems? So maybe the M is something else. Anyway, but I don't know what the types themselves would be, let alone the O part that they say was under our control. Just makes me think back to the previous test from like two episodes ago uh, with that other pilot. I think I mean LV when I wrote that. But I'm not sure if that one just got destroyed or if there were others on hand. So I don't know which one they're specifically referring to, but they refer to an M-type there. And the first question I had was M-type specimen one, which I have to believe is the Razaphon. They refer to Quan as the original when regarding Eato, implying a relationship between the two of them? Or is it just the order of specimens of Mu that they have, right? That they're saying that uh, Quan is their original specimen when asking about what to do with Eato, and they're like, we have our original, don't we? So, 
the Bobem Foundation is in cahoots with the Mulians? They indicate Quan is returning home, but if that is the case, then why does the Foundation need Mu specimens if they are interacting with actual Mu already? I guess I'm confused about that. Also, the disembodied voice could have been a clone girl in the room, but for some reason, in the back of my mind, it just like sounded like uh, Ayato's mother, which is why I'm suggesting that possibly they're in cahoots with the Mu. Uh, otherwise, it seems like they're in cahoots if they're knowledgeable that they're sending Quan back. Then again, that could just be that they've bugged Quan and are going to be getting information from the Mulians that way. I don't know. These are question mark items for me. They're not definitive statements of fact. I feel like a lot of turmoil in this episode. It just predicated on Elvie's emotional outburst from two episodes back. Ayato was always the self-absorbed teenager trope but it feels like he didn't go so hard into the what am I really uh, since the first couple of episodes. At least not until Elvie pushed him in that hangar with her old twist in relationship when she uncovered the truth about him that he was a Moolian. That whole thing has just changed his outlook from before. Like, if you remember back early on when they were scanning him and he's got the blue lines and he thought about it back then, but then he goes on this whole um, cool with it arc, right? Like this whole, I'm going to think about other things. And then when she gets hit by it from LV, it just becomes a thing again. So. When uh, Haruka and Itsuki talk about their other halves leaving, it goes to show that everyone in this show is like this, though, albeit to lesser degrees always considering and living in their own problems, but the more adult among them being able to reach out past them and interact with others despite these emotional hang-ups. I think that's the real... That is the real understanding of... so far amongst a lot of these characters, like the one guy finally breaking... or signing the divorce papers with his wife and doing the musical thing for his dead daughter... Uh, the anniversary of either her death or her birthday, it's, I can't really remember, that they're moving past their own pain to reach out to others, whereas the teenagers in this show, or younger, are trapped within them, except for, except for moments of clarity, right? Like uh, Megumi here, understanding the, the pain that her own pain has caused her friend, that, that sort of thing. I can't imagine Elvie would be happier knowing what Eatu is up to in this episode. Imagine how many pilots died invading Tokyo, Jupiter, in the effort to get Eatu out in the first place. This whole self-absorbed Who Am I expedition would effectively make all of that for nothing, on first glance anyway. Like, what do you mean he's run back in there? I don't care if I want him dead. I want him dead out here. We, we sacrificed too much to get him out to have him go back in. Hell, I'd be more angry that he's bringing the Razaphon back to the Mulians. Like, cool, you know who you are now. You've given the super weapon back to the people who are constantly sending Dolums out to kill us. And I just made uh, well, my last point here is I've made three quick notes about relationship fixes that I've noticed that were wrong on my board before you point them out to me. Go ahead, still point them out to me so I can still get them fully correct, but the quick notes I have, Megumi had a crush on Suichi, which obviously I had backwards uh, when I was watching. Suichi is in a relationship with Kim, which I didn't even think to point out because I didn't even realize it at the time. But I guess thinking back to a number of episodes back, uh, they did celebrate Christmas together, or some some holiday when it was snowing. I believe they um, exchanged gifts. So, yeah, now that I'm mentioning it, it's coming back to me. Okay, this would have been so much easier if Griff had just done this when I gave him everything. And Itsui, uh, Itsuki is a part of the Bobim Foundation, which I guess I just missed somehow. I think I even started the episode talking about that. 
but didn't get there when I was making the board. Anyway, this has been uh, my reaction to this episode of Bronze Aphon. Once again, thank you, Yuki Alley, for uh, sponsoring this, and I hope you're not terribly disappointed in my solo version of the reaction to it. I am working on getting back into the swing of things, so thank you once again. I've been Theta, this has been Stoneface Reactions to Raz Aphon, and I will catch you next time. Bye bye Hey everybody, thanks for watching another Stoneface Reactions. If you have an idea of another video we could go ahead and watch, go ahead and put it in the comments down below, and we'll add it to the wheel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you thought about this video, and what parts you liked. And until then, we'll see you next time. Is this too goofy?